Now we will sing hymn 115. Please join us on hymn 115, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns the lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come thou wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nigh. To us the path of knowledge. in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come desire of nations mine, all peoples in one heart and mind, bitter strife and quarrels cease, fill the whole world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Um, let us sing him, yeah, let us sing him 125, Joy to the World, him 125, Joy to the World. And wonders 
wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders and wonders of his love. Amen. Amen. Luke 2, 1, 3 to 5. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because his, he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Please join us to sing him. 144, O sing a song of Bethlehem. 144. <laughs> on earth the angels sing away oh sing a song of Nazareth a sunny days of joy oh sing of fragrant flowers breath and of the sinless boy for now the flowers of Nazareth Every heart may grow. Now spreads the fame of his dear name on all the winds that blow. Oh, sing a song of Calvary in its glory in this name of him who hung upon the tree and took our sin. from the grave and Christ our Lord by heaven adored is mighty now to save And so it was, while they were there, the days were accomplished, and she should be delivered. And she brought forth the firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Let us sing hymn 143, Silent Night. Holy Night. Silent. 
silent night, holy night, darkness flies all its light, shepherds hear the angels sing, Alleluia, hail the King, Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure love. From thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, silent night. Star, lend thy light with the angels. Let us sing, Alleluia to our King. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angels of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. Please join us on hymn 119, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Thank you. 
And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. At this moment, I'd like to ask you guys to uh, uh, sing with us hymn number 133. Starting to feel my voice go out, and there's still some singing to be done today. So, <laughs> hymn number 133, Now is Born the Divine Christ Child. Please sing with us. shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was, the, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Now we're going to sing two hymns, two favorite hymns, uh, back to back of the angels on 142. We're going to start with Angels We Have Heard on High. We ask for you guys to sing a little louder. Join us. Help us. <laughs> 142. Angels, we have Hey! 
122, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. 122. as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Now we're going to have hymn 121, Go Tell It on the Mountain, by Andres and Daniel.
and while he yet spake, be oh. <laughs> And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Luke 2.16 Now we're going to have the children come up and they're going to sing Away in a Manger. Mark 2, 1, and 11. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh.
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Oh, that today the human family could recognize that song. The declaration then made, the note then struck, will swell to the, to the close of time um, and resound to the ends of the earth when the sun of righteousness, righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. That song will be re-echoed by the voice of a great multitude as the voice of many waters saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Revelation 19.6 Heaven and earth are no wider apart today than when the sh when then when, he, when shepherds listen to the angel song, humanity is still as much the object of heaven's solicitude as when common men of common occupations meet angels at noonday and talk with the heavenly messengers in the vineyards and the fields. To us, in the common walk with life, heaven may be very near. Angels from the courts above will attend the steps of those who come and go at God's command. At this moment, let us sing uh, hymn 132, O Come, All Ye Faithful. <clears throat> stooped low to take humanity. Rude and forbidding were his earthly surroundings. His glory was veiled, that the majesty of his outward form might not become an object of attraction. He shunned all outward displays. Riches, worldly honor, and human greatness can never save a soul from death. Jesus proposed that no attraction of an earthly nature should call men to his side. Only the beauty of heavenly truth must draw those who follow him. The character of the Messiah had long been foretold in prophecy, that he and he desired men to accept him upon the testimony of the word of God. Now we will sing hymn 
136. <coughs> Good Christians, now rejoice. 136. the seven-week cycle and giving gifts have in common? It just occurred to me as we were singing, and so I added to the beginning of the message. What does the seven-week cycle and giving gifts have in common? There's only one explanation for them, right? Astronomy can't explain the seven-week cycle. What's the seven-week cycle? Oh, the seven-day seven cycle, sorry. Thank you. So the weekly cycle is what I'm trying to say. No wonder you have faces like, what's he talking about? He's, he's got a new theory coming here. The seven day cycle. What does the seven day cycle and giving gifts have in common? There's only one explanation, isn't there? Come from, 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 from they come from God. Right? Giving, giving gifts, giving something. Yeah, it comes, you, we would think that it comes naturally to us, right? But in the world that we live in now, it's more like, how am I going to get this here? Right? Or, um, you know, bribing kids to be obedient with a gift, with a promise of something coming. Right? But truly, as we have been singing and as we have been going through the events of the birth of Jesus, we can see where giving truly comes from. And what God gave. And there is a, a passage in Scripture found in Matthew 20, beginning in verse 25. For he, Jesus, explains the whole purpose of that gift himself. It says there, Matthew 20, 25 to 28, But Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and that they, are, um, and they that are great exercise authority upon them, but then he says, but it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. And then he gives the explanation. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. There's two uh, words there. One word, uh, minister, which comes from the Greek diakonos, or where we get the English word deacon. 
Um, and it means an attendant, a waiter. And then the other word that Jesus uses there, doulos, which means a slave, a servant, actually literally means a slave, a bondman, a servant, or other translations. And this is really what Christmas is about. It's not about pinpointing the day Jesus was born and celebrating that because of the birth of Jesus, but because of what he did, what he came to do, as he explained, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Great Controversy, page 88, uh, no, Great Controversy version, the, the, the 88 version, page 19 says, Although Israel had mocked the messengers of God and despised his words as misused his prophets, he had still manifested himself to them as the Lord, God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Notwithstanding repeated rejections, his mercy had continued its pleadings. With more than a father's pitying love for the son of his care, God had sent to them by his messengers, rising up bedtimes and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. When remonstrance, entreaty, and rebuke had failed, he sent them the best gift of heaven. Nay, he poured out all heaven in that one gift. What does it mean to serve? Doing service. That's what Jesus did. That's what he taught us to do. That's what the meaning of his coming is and should be for us. You know, the dictionary talks about service as the action of helping or doing work for someone. Jesus said, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. We can say self. We cannot say, say serve self and serve God at the same time. The principle he came to teach us with his giving, with God's giving of that one gift, that ultimate gift, is a principle that there is no neutral ground in service. If we are not selflessly serving God, we are selfishly serving ourselves. This is why it's so important to behold that which will lead us to do service for others. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The more we behold His character, His goodness, His gift, the more we will be transformed into the likeness of that gift. But the opposite is also true. The more we behold those in the world around us, or even just self, and we focus on ourselves, the less we'll, we'll, we, we will be like Him. It holds true for what we read, what we listen, what we watch. We become participants if What's being done is selfish, evil. We participate of it by beholding it. The contrast Jesus makes before, before he gives them the principle of true service is that the Gentiles, the world, those that do not serve God, exercise authority for their own benefit, not for the benefit of others. They rule their subjects in order to gain something for themselves that will benefit themselves. Satan understands this concept. Very well. You can see it in Matthew 4, 8 through 10. 
Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Service is an act of worship. It is an act of allegiance. It says in the Review of an Herald of September 6, 1881, the real character of the church is measured not by the high profession she makes, not by the names enrolled upon the church books, but by what she is actually doing for the master, by the number of her persevering faithful workers. Personal interest and vigilant individual effort will accomplish more for the cause of Christ than can be wrought by sermons or creeds. In Testimonies for the Church, it says, Wherever a church is established, all the members should engage actively in missionary work. They should visit every family in the neighborhood and know their spiritual condition. And it goes on. Lots of different opportunities that God gives us to serve. And as I mentioned last, uh, earlier uh, about the concert last week, that we had the blessing and the opportunity to give to this community. Um, there's a testimony that came to Daniel, our son, or someone that participated in playing. And I want to read that to you because it just, I, I actually cried when I read this. Because, you know, you think about all the work that goes into this, right, and reaching out to the community, and maybe you don't even have time to think about the effect. And so when little snippets like these come, it is so refreshing and so powerful. <clears throat> this is what this person said. This, talking about the concert, truly, this was truly a gift from God to me. And then they say to every single person involved, both directly and indirectly. I could sit down with you and just tell story after story of how this touched so many of those who participated. When something is totally laid at the feet of the cross, God's presence blesses beyond measure. Then they say, my story. My wonderful Christmas son passed in 2020. I realize he is healed and singing and worshiping his Lord and Savior right now, but this being close to his death has been really rough. Others that know me can confirm. I have just not been myself. Grief is so strange. But I just want to say, when you reached to me with your vision of hope for Owasso, I rem I reminded me, it reminded me that God is still doing miracles around us. This mother is so very grateful for seeing your obedience, sacrifice, and faith while working with this project. I prayerfully sent you people. I can honestly say I didn't give you one single name that God didn't confirm. He knew that God didn't confirm. He knew why. I didn't have to. Referring to those people that this person helped uh, contact, one or two were either an atheist or agnostic. And the story goes on. I didn't tell you because I knew that God would take care of them. This event brought Christ outside of the doors of a church building to, ev to, ev to, to the very heart of all those touched in the purest form. And he helped me through a dif difficult season. But I'm still working through that. Right now, I guess I would do anything for your family. All you have given me, the best present of all, all you have given me the best present of all, remembering 
the hope, caps, H-O-P-E, the hope of what is to come. Thank you for the little bit of heaven, forever grateful. That is the meaning of Christmas, isn't it? Jesus said that, this, he said this about service and giving. Whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. God wants our voluntary service. He wants us to choose to be his servants, his slaves, if you will. Satan wants to force us into his slavery. Our choice is ours. Jesus came to serve the God of the universe, our creator, the majesty of the entire universe, in order to save his created beings, he came to serve them. He became like one of us and served us. And he calls us to do the same. And this is what Christmas is about. And I pray that giving of ourselves and not focusing on self will be our best gift. Amen. We're going to sing hymn number 204. If you would like to stand, please. Precious Father, we are thankful for your love, your condescension to us in giving us your Son, that we can be like him, that he, through his life and death and resurrection, can make it possible for us to have eternal life. To you we cling this morning, asking that our hearts will be cleansed and transformed more and more into your likeness. We thank you, Father, for the gift of your Son. And we thank you that not only can we receive that gift, but also give that gift to others. We pray that you will help us to share that gift 
in our life, the way we live, the way we act, the way we behave, the way we talk, the way we interact with others. May people know that we have been with Jesus, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.